I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. In pursuit of this obligation since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports that have come to us from all kinds of sources. Of this great mass of reports, we have been able adequately to explain the great bulk of them, explain them to our own satisfaction. We've been able to explain them as uh, hoaxes, as erroneously identified friendly aircraft, as meteorological or electronic phenomena, or as light aberrations. Do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector General. Has any of the activity um, been aggressive, been um, hostile in your reports? Uh, I know of multiple colleagues of mine that got physically injured, and uh, the activity... And I got to by by UAPs or by by people within the the federal government. Both. If you were me, where would you look? Titles, programs, departments. I'd be happy to give you that in a closed environment. I can tell you specifically. And I would say, and I've told people that you, you have to know where to look. They're not going to divulge it to you because of the classification levels. But if you know where to look and who to talk to, which is exactly what Mr. Grush can point you, then you then you have them. For decades, stories of alien abductions have captivated and terrified people around the world. These accounts have sparked debates among believers, skeptics, and scientists alike. Today, we delve deep into the alien abduction phenomenon, exploring its origins, common themes, and the ongoing search for answers. The modern era of alien abduction stories began on September 19, 1961, with Betty and Barney Hill. This interracial couple from New Hampshire claimed they were taken aboard a UFO while driving home late at night. It was September 19th, 1961, a night that still feels like a dream and a nightmare. Barney and I were driving back from a quick getaway to Canada, cruising down Route 3 through the White Mountains of New Hampshire. It was just after 10 p.m. and the road was quiet nothing but the hum of the car and the stars hanging heavy in the night sky. Do you see that? I asked, pointing at a bright light hovering above the trees. At first it seemed like a star, but it was moving, darting in strange patterns, unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Barney was silent for a moment, watching the light, his brow furrowed. It's probably just a plane, he said but I could hear the doubt in his voice. It wasn't a plane. Planes don't move like that, I said. The light kept following us. I could feel my pulse quickening, a cold dread settling in my chest. We pulled over to get a better look, and that's when the light got closer, larger, until I could see the outline of something metallic, an actual craft hovering silently in the sky. Dr. Benjamin Simon began hypnotizing the Hills on January 4, 1964. The following is an excerpt of Betty Hill's raw audio. I don't know where we are. I don't even know how we got here. Her body like we've been driving and I don't know how long we haven't even been talking. We I just been sitting here feeling that something's going to happen. And I'm not really too afraid. Except right now I am at that time I didn't feel afraid. Why are you crying if you're not afraid? I'm afraid now, but I was oh, I, I don't I, I wasn't afraid I, I was afraid when I saw the men in the road. Men in the road? 
afraid of my life. Tell me about the men in the world. <laughs> I tell me about the men in the world. It's all right now. You're safe here. Tell me about the men in the road. We, we're driving along. We're on a tired road. And all of a sudden, without any warning or any reason or rhyme or anything, Marty made a... Uh, he always... The brakes, I think, he would squeal. He stopped so suddenly and made this sharp left hand turn to the highway. And we went onto this narrow road. Um, I was wondering what he was doing down here, but he wasn't saying anything, and I wasn't. I figured, well, maybe we're lost, but so what? We'll come out somewhere. And we're going along, and there was a sharp curve in the road. And as we went around the curve, there were trees. There were a lot of tall, tall trees on my side. I don't know about Bonnie's side of the road, but there was these men. As more abduction stories emerged, certain patterns began to appear. Many abductees report being taken from their homes or vehicles, experiencing paralysis or inability to move, undergoing medical examinations, encountering small, gray beings with large eyes, missing time or gaps in memory. The consistency in these reports is striking. People from all walks of life, who've never met each other, describe remarkably similar experiences. One controversial aspect of abduction law is the idea of human-alien hybrids. Stumbled into uh, one case after another that had to do with um, what seemed like the removal of ova from women and then a or an artificial insemination procedure and production of small hybrid children and sperm from men and sperm from men exactly and suddenly the thing made tremendous sense if if this is happening then obviously they're going to have to go back to the same people again and again uh, if this is a genetic experiment, you're going to deal with generations of the family. And each or generation on, or on is the, like yes. preparing soil to yes, be um, exactly. Well, be how do you? How does a, uh, 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 somebody practicing agronomy go about producing a new strand of corn? Right. You have to go through, you know, generation after generation. Mm -hmm. uh, breeding uh, is uh, th that, that's the way breeding operates. So that's that would then give the UFO occupants a reason to be hanging around and doing this and doing it covertly for a long time. Right. If they're going to have to, instead of just picking up here and there some odd person, that they're going to have to follow somebody mm -hmm. and uh, t go with that person through uh, it, his or her development. Physically. So that was the next phase, the fact yeah. that you found that these individuals were being Right. Followed. And of course, that, that became absolutely crucial to the whole understanding of the abduction phenomenon. Because now we you have a motive, you have a... Uh, a, a, a rationale for all these various uh, procedures that they're doing. The motive being they were creating a genetic um, a, a race genetic of... mix, a yeah, hybrid yeah. mix, yeah. exactly. Probed me um, anally. They have stuck needles up my nose. They have stuck needles in my eyes. Um, they have probed my ears. I remember uh, being subjected to a procedure that involves taking semen. Uh, placed on an on a operating table, immobilized. I, uh, I have, was induced to have an erection. They, mind you, there are no sexual feelings or any passion connected with this. It's a very cold procedure. I suddenly began to feel something moving inside of me. And then I felt this thing dropping out of me and I reached, I reached down and I had caught this thing in my hand and it was this fetus of what would seem to be a, uh, an alien baby. And it had come out of me. Many abductees claim to have physical evidence of their encounters, such as mysterious scars or implants. However, conclusive proof remains elusive. Despite these claims, no implant or physical evidence has been conclusively proven to be of extraterrestrial origin. 
Scientists have proposed several explanations for abduction experiences. Sleep paralysis, false memory syndrome, temporal lobe sensitivity, hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations. The concept of alien abduction has permeated popular culture, appearing in countless movies, TV shows, and books. This raises the question, does media influence abduction reports, or do reports influence media? It's likely a bit of both. Media representations can shape our expectations and interpretations of unusual experiences, while real reports inspire new fictional narratives. For those who believe they've been abducted, the experience is profoundly life-changing. Skeptics argue that while abductees may be sincere, their experiences can be explained through psychological and neurological processes. Despite decades of reports, alien abductions remain a mystery. Some researchers continue to study the phenomenon, looking for patterns and explanations. Whether alien abductions are the result of extraterrestrial encounters, psychological phenomena, or something yet unexplained, they continue to fascinate and perplex us. As we gaze at the stars, the question remains, are we alone, or are there others out there, watching and waiting?